demonstrate in our giving of love, of gratitude, of trust. Lord, we ask that you would take it as only you can and bless it, multiply it for your good and for your glory. Lord, I just thank you again for the opportunity to participate in your act of love. In Jesus' name, amen.
We knew he was dead, it is finished, she said. We had watched as his life ebbed away. And we all stood around till the guard took him down. Joseph begged for his body that day. It was late afternoon when we got to the tomb, wrapped his body and sealed up the grave. But I know how you feel, my Lord's death is real, but please listen and hear what I say.
was this voice she first heard, those kind, gentle words, asking what was her reason for tears. And I sobbed in despair, my Lord is in there. He said, child, it is I, I am here. my brethren and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father, my God and your God. Anybody in the house today, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. My Lord. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to 
John chapter 20. We're going to focus our attention today on verses 11 through 18. If you allow me about 20 pastoral minutes. The clock sometimes stops on the pastor. In two life lessons, we'll spend some time looking at this powerful passage of scripture. And our key verse for the day is found in verse number 18. So John chapter 20, verse 18 in your Bibles. When you have found that in your Bibles, will you say amen? And if you don't mind standing with me, we have the King James translation on the screens. And we can read that together from the screens. The King James translation 20, verse 18. If we can just pop that back up once again. Let us read together and it says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Let's do that one more time, church family, for the internet congregation out there. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. As you take your seats, subject matter for the morning. I've just seen Jesus. The chapter opens up powerfully by talking about on the first day of the week as Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. It gives us this firsthand encounter, this firsthand experience, if you will, of how she comes to the tomb and finds it empty and runs and tells uh, Peter and the other disciple that came with him uh, to come down to the tomb and how they find it empty. And it reminds us that in seeing the empty tomb, they had not brought to remembrance, the text tells us. In verse 9, it says, for well, as of yet amplified, they did not know or understand the statement that Jesus had shared with them that he would rise again from the dead. And so we pick up the storyline right there with verse 11 through 15. We'll have the King James on the screen for you. Let me read the Amplified uh, for your hearing. It says, but Mary remained standing outside the tomb, sobbing. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, woman, why are you sobbing? And she told them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. On saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, how you, why are you crying so? For whom are you looking? Supposing that it was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him from here, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. Life lesson one, if you're jotting down this one. When the exhilaration of your transformation is clouded by the trials and tribulations of life, stand firm on Christ's person and his promises. Y'all going to leave me some preaching time? When, when the exhilaration of your transformation is, is clouded by the trials and the tribulations of life, when life stuff start getting in the way, stand firm on his person and his promises. Mary, Mary invites you and I to pull up a seat beside her today and feel what she has feel, what she's feeling at the moment as she views the empty tomb, as she sees the angels, an angelic host inside as she talks to this to Jesus and not recognizes that it's him but assumes that is a god that is a gardener how the grief of the moment she 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 here's what has happened she's she's had this life transforming experience and the scriptures tell us that seven devils had been cast out of her so you know she's been through some tough times you know she's she's been she's experienced demonic possession and 
And you can just imagine how difficult those days had, had to have been. Uh, you know, the, the, de the demons uh, just tossing her to and fro, making her do different things, controlling her body, her mind, and her spirit. And, and, and to be delivered by this Jesus who now has told to cast these demons out and given her this, oh, somebody talk to me, given her this fresh new start in life, this transformational moment, if you will. The, she's no longer gripped by, the, by Satan and his demonic host. She's now, she's now free. She's now free to be whom God has designed her to be, free to live as God has designed her to live. And, and in that moment, I tell you, church family, something powerful has to have taken place. The, the exhilaration, the, oh, I, I need somebody in the house who knows what it feels like to be free, who knows what it feels like to have walked down that road and, and maybe felt the strongholds of life cramping and strength. Can I talk to somebody over here? I, I need some help. I need somebody in the house who, who rec recognizes how difficult bondage feels, <laughs> how strong the chains feel when they're gripping you and it's got hold of you, and it feels like there's no hope inside of you. I, I need somebody over here who might just let me know that they've got a sense of what it feels like to feel like their life is all caught up and bound up and, and there's no future for them. There, oh, can I talk to the choir for a moment? And there's no hope for them and, and the strongholds are gripping them down. You know, she wasn't, who knows, it might have been drugs. It might have been, been pornography. It might have been whatever it might have been. But it's gripped her to the point that life has no, has no meaning. And she heard about this Jesus. Or maybe she heard about how he had given sight to the blind. Maybe she heard about how he had, he had given strength to those who had never walked before. Maybe, maybe she heard something about how, she, how he might have raised Lazarus or somebody from the dead. Maybe, maybe she had heard all of these stories and she had to see Jesus. And when she encountered Jesus, he freed her. 